Okay, welcome back, physics students. Day two of our final review. Okay, so today's going to be a little quicker than yesterday did. Yesterday was a little bit more math intensive. Today, less math intensive. I don't know if we do any math today. Well, let's see. Okay, so it says, which part of the electromagnetic spectrum would photon A be found? Now, so we look at all these different types of photons. We got a frequency for them, and we got an energy for them. Now, when I look on the electromagnetic spectrum. I see I have a scale for frequency. I see I have a scale for wavelength, but I do not have a scale for energy. So energy is completely useless in this problem. Unless I want to go back and try to figure the wavelength using E equals HC over lambda Good luck with that. You really have too much time on your hands if you want to do it that way. Uh, I'm just going to look at the frequency. And the frequency is 1 times 10 to the negative 9, 10 to the 19. Okay, so if I look here, I say, where is 1 to 10 to the 19? So it's right on there. So the answer for this one's kind of strange. Like I probably should have picked a better example. The one on the test will, either, will be very clear where it falls into the electromagnetic spectrum. I wouldn't have picked something like this. I might have picked 10 to the 15, so it would have been right here maybe, or 10 to the uh, 11, so it's right here in microwaves. But this one, if we go to 10 to the 19, is our frequency. It could be an X-ray or a gamma ray. So for now, it's an X-ray or a gamma ray based on the electromagnetic spectrum, but I promise you for the exam will be clearly one, not this kind of eh, answer. But both of these would be correct, yes. All right, next one. During a collision between a photon and an electron, there's a conservation of, and this was from the reading, just like in the non-quantum world that we live in, is conservation of momentum and energy. Just like the real world, anytime you have a closed system and two things collide, you have conservation of momentum and energy, which is very interesting that, that that rule applies to the quantum level and it applies to our level, which is kind of rare. You know, there's not as many things as go as uh, neatly as that. Now, the last one we're going to do for today, nice quick lesson, is what phenomenon explains the particle theory of light? That's going to be a multiple choice question, but the correct answer is the, uh, it's ex I always escapes my mind what it's called. It's called, because it's a big word, photoelectric effect. And I should know this off the top of my top of my head because this is the uh, this is what how Albert Einstein won his Nobel Prize not for uh, general or special not for general or special relativity he won it for the photoelectric effect which is more of a quantum physics thing compared consider he's considered one of the uh, found, founding fathers of basically co modern cosmology uh, but basically what the photoelectric effect said, if I fire a photon or an electron at a piece of photosensitive material, when it hits, what happens is we realize that at a certain point, if it's low enough energy and the frequency is low, nothing bounces off. It'll just hit there and nothing comes. You have to hit a certain number to get a photon of light or an electron to bounce off. But it has to, it's dependent upon frequency. Now if it's dependent upon frequency, that means something that below this frequency, I could be hitting something with a lot of energy, but a low frequency and nothing's going to come off. I play with the frequency, there's a frequency threshold to where I get to it to a certain point, then it starts emitting photons. 
Uh, basically, that was the idea that there's a certain value, a certain quanta, that allows for the expulsion of energy, or reflection, you would think of it in that way, of a, of a charged particle. That quanta is where we get the quantum physics from, that we know that there's individually small particles involved in this. Okay, so that's the answer. If you don't want the science lesson, just remember it's photoelectric effect. Okay? And if you want to seem smart, it's how Albert Einstein won his Nobel Prize. He did not win it for relativity. All right, guys, I will talk to you later. Good job.